Hey guys, so today we're going to kind of look at something slightly different today, um, almost like the big picture, if you will. So, you know, I've been going over like Messi's moves, like inside cuts, feints, and all the variants and all that, but what I really want to look at is, you know, Messi's intentions, what he's thinking, or trying to decipher what he's thinking, and um, all the different combinations. So, you know, w w whether he does like, you know, a faint run that leads to like a feint through an inside cut and all that. Um, so we can start with um, the fate run here uh, to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So you notice as Messi touches the ball, uh, as I've mentioned before, a lot of times he kind of like puts that like supporting foot into the middle of his body and you see he drops that shoulder um, just to give enough flares because um, a lot of times when you, when you crisscross, you know, your supporting foot in, it kind of like gives like, um, I guess, the potential to wrap your uh, left foot around the ball and do an inside cut or as you see here as it does, you know, touch with the outside of the foot or or even the inside but nudge the ball forward um, rather than uh, cut it sharply. But what I really want to look at is not just that the move um, but also like what he possibly could have done. So you see as Messi continues to go, you see that uh, right foot kind of goes towards the middle of the body and um, doesn't quite drop his shoulder, but you know, I've done enough times where I could definitely feel like he could have like done touched with the outside of his foot and gone there, but um, instead, you know, he just takes another step and does an inside cut to the other side. Oh, actually, luck or cut up. And also, I kind of want to look at uh, is the tempo of the move. So, uh, a lot of times, you know, when you have a defender marking you, um, you know, sometimes you just might go and do it to like say a feint. Uh, right away or sometimes you might do it a bit earlier or later or you know you transitioned because you were originally thinking about doing the feint but you know maybe you take a step or maybe like halfway like as you're gonna like take it do an outside cut you um, swing your foot in and do an inside cut so it really got me thinking when I was kind of doing training with a teammate of mine and um, really trying to do that feint run so as you see I get um, towards uh, the ball here, but even before, you know, I try to keep that uh, right foot relatively to the center of my body. And as I touch, you know, come over here, this is where I kind of, see, kind of like drive my knee there, like I'm going to kind of see my body shape, my shoulder kind of drops, I'm like, almost like trying to like swing in potentially to do an inside cut. Um, kind of see my foot extend a little bit, that's what I really got. So. A lot of times Messi keeps that knee bent, but you kind of see it's like, it almost actually look, looks more like a traditional feint at that point. Uh, my uh, right foot does go out to the outside a little bit, and then I go to the uh, out there and uh, just off, you know, foot um, my teammate for a bit. Um, now what I really wanted to get at is, um, what you see here is, uh, uh, again, it's, it looks like a more of a traditional feint than, you know, a shallow feint in the feint run in the middle. And I wanted to see if I could, you know, potentially, um, you know, do an insight cut here uh, rather than um, doing a slight feint and going to the outside. Um, so, so also the, the last point was to bring about is the temple of the move. So you know, say like he's marking me here and I'm still deciding what to do. Um, maybe I might not necessarily bring extend my foot a little bit out. It could keep in because I can potentially still do the inside cut. And then, you know, at the last moment, I touched with the outside of the foot. Um, so really try to hone in on like, the various situations. So this is a similar move Messi does with uh, the faint run, but extends his foot a little bit, depending on the situation. So you see, as before, um, Messi is just that faint. You see that uh, foot kind of, like, crosses into the... Um, center of his body like this and see like how his body's like almost tilted like he could like swoop in and like do an inside cut uh shape like this so he you know takes that touch here and then you know sometimes you really need to concentrate um when you do, kind of do the move it's kind of instinctual but you know like, at least when i watch the footage to try trying to understand um you know what, what causes it but uh you know like you see at this point here like you see his foot's already like starting to go to the middle and, um, you know, it looks like he might start to lunge in, so, and I think he's, you know, he, he could go this way, but I think the ball's rolling a little fast, so, you know, at this point, you know, he wants to add a little bit more flair and, like, an extra feint, so you see that foot kind of, like, kind of extends out a little bit more, like a traditional feint, rather than just a feint run where it, like, stays in the center, so, you know, 
And it's really that fluidity and like, you know, using your different options. And with the case of Messi, you know, having the ball close to his body. You know, this time it's not as close, but close to his body and picking out the different various options and being flexible. I also want to look at um, Messi doing, I guess what I call the toe drag feint. Um, and also looking at the various tempos and what you might, you know, faint early or later, or even not at all, and adjust maybe to a different move, like an inside cut or another feint. So you just see Messi, you know, he sees his defender, he's kind of standing still. You see um, that right foot crisscrosses inwards to the other side of the ball, and then his left foot kind of looks like it's about to sweep in. Um, but, you know, he sees the defender, you know, kind of like almost react early so you know he just let, does the feint right away with a lot uh, I find a lot of the times um, at least in my experience you need to like have that left foot to at least get close to the ball before you do the uh, before he like, starts to commit but you, you know if you like if you do see him commit early you know you don't have to bother you just go straight to the feint without moving your left foot too much um, I do also want to bring the point Some, sometimes like you might originally think about doing this kind of feint, but um, instead, like you see, it doesn't uh, react, and you see some space over there. You, like instead of doing that, you can just take a touch with the inside of the foot, and then continue to like do your combos. Um, or sometimes, too, what I mentioned before, like a lot of times, Messi will, like kind of like chop or flop his foot down, and the ball will roll a bit, and then and then you know a lot of times when defenders see that ball kind of rolling a little, then they start to really react, and then you can really do that feint and go to the other side. See what I mean with Messi taking a touch with a toe drag feint before feinting? Uh, let's play this clip, and here it is from a closer angle. So as you saw, like Messi's like right foot kind of crisscrosses in the middle, or at least it's, like. Looks like it's pretty prepared to do an inside cut here. Um, yeah, like like bef I mentioned before, like had like you know the fender like reacted early, he wouldn't really even need to move his left foot. He could just you know just skip onto his right and do the feint immediately. Uh, but you know usually with my case, um, you generally need to move that foot a little bit before they you know start to commit. Um, and if they don't, maybe you can, like do a little like see like Messi does. You see that foot kind of flaps down like this. Um, I think you can do that um, without over clay committing your uh, touch. And you, you see Messi's body shape, like say like the defender stayed still and didn't um, want to plant, or sorry, didn't want to commit to going anywhere. Um, you know, Messi could continue to do another inside cut or like a La Croqueta to get around him. Uh, but, you, but you see like at this point, um, it's being, you, you know, flexible and like agile and it's reading the situation well enough that you see as he starts to come, Messi can recognize the situation and then, you know, rather than maybe take, do a plant again or crisscrossing and then taking it into a touch, um, he can just begin his feint there as um, the defender reacts a bit later after seeing the ball roll away. Uh, here's a similar situation with taking, doing a toe drag feint with the ball rolling a little bit. So I couldn't find a closer angle for the beginning part here, but um, you see uh, what Messi does here is like you see, you see that ball kind of uh, rolls a little bit. Um, he doesn't quite crisscross as much, but um, you see he does take an inside touch and see that ball kind of rolls slightly, rolls a few inches to the right. And then, you know, like the defender doesn't react like too much over there here. So, you know, he, he does a slight, maybe a slight feint to the right and then he you know, it's faints to the left here, uh, and then you see that defender react there, and, that, and then you just simply do an inside cut. Another thing I want to bring up that, um, you know, does come to the point of being agile when you're on the ball is um, really the technique of how Messi touches it, not just the move, whether it just be a feint or an inside cut and all that, uh, but really how he moves with the ball. Actually, even how he moves without the ball, but uh, it's a topic for another time. Uh, so let's play this clip of Messi here. So the point I wanted to bring up is, I think I mentioned before how uh, Messi hops, um, especially when he did the feint against uh, Botain. But it, even here, when he's taking these little touches here, you see that kind of foot kind of rise up. Now, he's not jumping super high, but I find that gives you enough um, flair. And but what I mentioned about um, being agile is, you know, a lot, a lot of times when a defender is uh, reading you, like they'll see you make a touch, 
and then like they might shuffle their feet. Um, a lot of times, like if you're doing a hop, like you're you're still in the air, so you, you can quickly say like the defender reacts really um, uh, fast one way. You, since you're still in the air, you, you could just quickly adjust, like lift and stomp, or stomp the other foot and change directions. Um, and it also like brings the, the makes the timing a less predictable. So you can hop and like at, at any point of the jump, you can touch the ball. Um, if you don't hop, like it's pretty easy to predict. They, you, you know, you take one step and you nudge it right away, and take another step and you nudge it away. So it's very easy for the defender to read. Um, and also, you know, as you you know jumps just a slight hop because you you know I was um, looking at footage of myself um, just training against the, my teammates and just just not, trying to notice everything and I, you, you know like a habit that I um, stopped doing was trying to hop, uh, hop but I find as a general rule it's better to hop um, as you touch a ball so you see as Messi hops you know even with the inside of his foot see here like you, you know, if he found he wanted to do an outside touch, he could, because um, he's up in the air, but instead he sees the space and just takes an inside touch here, and then get, a lot of times he keeps, you see that foot, like, actually crisscrosses the center of the body, like like this, and then, you know, inside cut here. You know, he, he could have maybe done an outside cut if, um, you know, the space warranted. And then, yeah, you know, again, gives a, like, good amount of flair and, um, flexibility of what you want to do. And finally, I kind of want to talk about La Croqueta, or even an inside cut that, um, you know, if you can't get your opposite foot uh, close enough to the ball to touch. Um, so, you know, I've talked about cobbles uh, recently, so, you know, like I talked about the toe drag feint, so say, you know, you're that defender here, and, um, you, you know, you, you, you try to, like, do that toe drag feint, and then, um, you know, you, you feint there, and then I guess the defender reacts and then maybe take another touch to, to the inside and then, you know, he kind of shuffles there. Um, you see a little bit of a gap there, but uh, not too much. It, you know, it's just really understanding the situation and your your defender's um, body posture and the space you have. Um, so a lot of times, like, I find, like, when Messi's in that area, so he's left-footed, so he's, like, if he's to the, slightly to the right or sees the space there, um, they'll do La Croqueta. And um, also do want to, you'll see in a bit, bring the point of um, timing of the hop. So I mentioned a lot of times he, for the supporting leg, he hops, I find it with La Croqueta, or even inside cuts, uh, as you'll see, he'll hop with his um, left foot rather than the right. Uh, so let's play this uh, clip of Messi running. So I really want to get to this point before I break it down. So, you know, as Messi takes a touch here, you, you see, like, how it um, kind of goes up in the air with his left a little bit. So. Um, he might sometimes hop with his right too, but I find generally it's uh, his left uh, foot, his dribbling foot that hops a little bit here. And then, you know, he, he can almost like, you know, as he takes a, sh a touch there, he can just like shuffle his right foot there. Um, because, you know, as soon as he touches there, he can't potentially La Croqueta by jumping up because his foot would be like too long in the air and it's like almost like really shuffle or slide in front. Uh, to get a quick touch of the ball. Um, see here, it's not a La Coqueta because he doesn't touch with the right part of his foot, but um, I find it's the same mechanic. So I, even if like, the ball's a little too front and you can't manage to get your right foot in front of it, I find it's the same principle, you know, hopping with the right foot. And um, in this case, he just crisscrossed a little bit with his right to have a better angle over to the right. And as Messi uh, continues to dribble here, uh, it takes a little touch here. Uh, so here's the the next move where he does look okay to here. So again, see he Messi likes left foot. You can see he jumps in the air with his left, and then um, since he's, I think he plans to go a bit more forward. Um, you see Messi's like kind of sticks out um, in front to prepare for a touch like more forward rather than like a bit more to the side. Um, I'll, I'll talk about it a bit when you see me, my example, but uh, I find like if say the defender is like here, like, you know, you're kind of going around and you come here and then maybe you're maybe planning to kind of go around him like this rather than um, say be more direct like this. 
um, generally Miss Miss crosses uh, right foot like about there, so like the the level of kata will be more around him rather than more direct. Uh, but but you see in this case, you know, Messi sticks his foot out um, in front after he hops with his left uh, to prepare for la croqueta. So here he comes here there, and then he can like kind of shuffle his right foot over after the touch. It's the same uh, mechanic here. So like you know, Messi like kind of hops with his left onto here, and then you see brings that left right foot out there to prepare for La Corqueta, but I think he sees the defender kind of like anticipating um, this move and also uh, he kind of runs out of space because the um, the back line is pretty close by, but um, I, th I think he sees this and then, you know, you see it adjusts. So a lot, lot like this, again, like, you know, I don't, don't want to just look at the move now. I kind of want to look at like all these options that he has and the might set of Messi. So, you know, he... You know, initially prepare for the Lakokata, but if you just try to go for a nut bag or even a touch around and try to go past with speed, but I think I think he runs out of um, space. So here's my attempt at uh, the first version of Lakokata. Yeah, I, I, I didn't do it for too long. It was, it was pretty hot, as you can see. My shirt's off. Sorry for that. But um, yeah, like I, had, I, I didn't jump as high because. Um, I was doing another variant of La Croqueta that we'll see, but um, uh, I try to get my foot forward. Um, I find I should, I should jump a little bit more uh, to get some more leverage. But, you know, the main principle is, is, is just so, like, it's it's far enough in front I can do a more direct touch uh, past the defender. So to see the other version of La Croqueta where he's going a little bit more around rather than direct, uh, let's play this clip here. So again, it comes just to the flexibility and the agileness of Messi. So you see how his right foot is like almost swooped in, like to touch the ball there. Uh, but I think he sees like the defender like, coming to like uh, block that path. So he kind of adjusts uh, and brings it a bit more to the outside to prepare to, to go there. But you see, you know, the defender preparing to go to the other side as well. And that's where he tries, you know, La Coqueta around him like this. So, in the other example, like, you know, Messi had brought his right foot a bit more forward um, since I guess he had some more space forward, but since he has to go about around, he, like, crisscrosses that right foot more in, and again, also jumps up in the air as he, with his left foot rather than his right, as he sweeps that foot in, and then, you know, attempts to look coquette up. Well, the defender does touch touch it there, but he does manage to get past him because he has enough flair and um, was agile enough to avoid him. Uh, maybe in the future there'll be a better example, but, you know, lot, again, lots of the times I'm trying to see Messi's intentions and, you know, all the possibilities and the adjustments he makes. And here's my attempt with the same principle. So going over what I talked about uh, in this video, say so I take trying to like bounce with my uh, right foot as I take a touch of the outside. And then, you know, before I was practicing my toe drag fit, but you know, you see crisscrossing my uh, right foot into the center and then kind of doing uh, various um, feints, sometimes just immediately fainting, sometimes bringing my foot in, sometimes, you know, just taking a slight tap and then flopping my foot down uh, before fainting and going to this side. Um, and then uh, what you see here is like, since I sit crisscrossing my foot and not seeing the angle and just taking a slight touch with uh, my, my dribbling foot and then, you know, seeing the angle here and then doing a La Coqueta after the outside touch here. So, you know, maybe I'm prepared to go out there, but you know, the defender adjusts and then I decide, you know, La Coqueta here. So after I take a touch here, I'm trying to like see, like see my kind of go up in the air a little bit. I try to do a slight hop crisscross my right foot into the center and then you know as soon as I touch I can immediately shuffle my uh, right foot there uh, I can't ju jump with my uh, right because uh, I need to be like I need to touch the ball immediately I can't be up in the air and then yeah I find that's good you know, to, to kind of get more around uh, the defender rather than more direct where I would put my right foot a bit more forward